All right, so uh, my name is Stefan Roy, and uh, I'm going to be presenting uh, the Leica HDS, uh, the Leica laser scanners, uh, also known as HDS, um, that we're able to provide. <sighs> Perfect. So just to give you a quick introduction of myself. So like I said, my name is Stefan Roy. Um, I've been in the mining industry for about five, over five years. Um, so that includes uh, engineering and consulting firms. Uh, I've worked under contractors. Um, I've also been an underground surveyor for a couple of years. Um, I, from the underground surveyor job, uh, I, begin, I began my work with NSS um, and I've been with them for just over three and a half years. Um, so my title with NSS is a mining and enge engineering account manager. So I deal with all the total stations, GPS, uh, high definition scanners uh, for above and below ground and a bunch of serving solutions. So we touch base on a lot of those. Um, if you guys have questions on different serving solutions, definitely drop me a line. Um, I'll be able to help you guys out. So today uh, we're going to be speaking about uh, the laser scanners, but this is all the this is a great list of different uh, geosystem products that we're able to offer. Um, we're also going to touch base a little bit on the mobile sensor platforms, uh, which will be later in my slides. Um, great list of who trusts the Leica equipment. Obviously, it's not everybody, but uh, this is just a quick list off the top of my head um, that I just uh, drew up. Um, just some, some of our great and loyal clients. All right, so let's dive into it. So what, uh, what is HDS essentially? So HDS uh, stands for High Definition Scanning. Um, it's basically a method uh, used by professionals to document and capture their environments and, in a 3D form. So the 3D form is called a point cloud. Um, this improves uh, efficiency and pro uh, productivity uh, in the field and office uh, through fast, simple to use and portable hardware software. Um, so two definitions that I will be using uh, throughout my presentation is uh, two words is the point cloud and registration. So if we can touch base on those two uh, key words. So a point cloud is essentially uh, a set of points defined by X, Y, and Z coordinate um, that represents uh, the external uh, surface of an object. So if we look at this uh, example here, we got two point clouds, uh, one and two. And in this window, we're actually performing a registration. So the registration is a method to combine two or more point clouds uh, captured by a scanner uh, in order to create a mass or a bundle or a scan world. So by uh, grabbing these two, um, these two scans uh, that are obviously scanned uh, close to each other, you're able to produce one big uh, point cloud um, with those two scans um, put together. So essentially what, what captures um, point cloud data. So you have uh, the BLK360, which is an indoor uh, and a light capture, uh, light outdoor capture scanner. Um, we use it for scope scanning and for areas of high danger. So it's essentially, the BLK is one of the smallest and easiest uh, imaging laser scanners in the world. Um, like I said, it's a quick and easy scanner uh, used for indoor and outdoor capture. Um, we use it a lot for the mining industry, uh, especially for stope scanning. So it's used to be put into a stope. <clears throat> oh, sorry, guys. Uh, it's used to be put into a stope um, uh, or areas of high danger. Um, and it basically use, uh, it's used for restrictions to personnel where drones cannot be deployed due to high winds, high ventilation. Um, it also produces very good quality data to review the area in question. Um, next up, we have the scan station. So the scan station P30, 40, and 50. So those are three different models there. So they're great for indoor and outdoor capture. They have the, we have, uh, sorry, the scan stations have the highest end accuracy um, that you're able to get throughout a scanner. Um, it's, it's used for inaccessible places. So like underneath a bridge, um, the top of a sky rise. Um, and it's also our most rugged scanner with an IP rating of 54. Um, so the models P30, 40, and 50, they're actually defined by the distance that they're able to capture. Um, I'll, I'll speak about the distance just, uh, I believe it's the next slide. 
Um, the scientific, they're also known as scientific grade uh, scanners, and they're also used for high end accuracy. Um, and like I said, they're able to uh, scan inaccessible places uh, at a safe position on site, uh, which really reduces the time in the field with uh, a lot less setups. Um, the next, which is a, one of their most uh, brand new products, is called the BLK to Go. So the BLK to Go, um, it's used mainly for indoor capture. Uh, it's used for quick and easy building and mapping, as well as quick speeds, uh, but it will have low accuracy for quick speeds. Um, so like I said, it's a handheld imaging scanner that recreates spaces uh, in 3D as you move. Um, it'll capture images and dimensionally accurate point clouds in real time and uses SLAM technology. So SLAM stands for uh, simultaneous localization and mapping, basically to record your, traje your traje trajectory uh, throughout space. Um, like I said, it's used for interior uh, building capture. It's got the lower accuracy for mapping, but your quickest speeds. And last one, which is uh, one of the uh, one of our top of the line scanners, is called the RTC 360, which is only about a year or two uh, too old. So the RTC 360 is kind of we call it the mid-range scanner. It's better accuracy than the BLK, less accurate than the scan station. It's a nice in between uh, in between scanner. So it's made for indoor and outdoor capture. It's our mid tiered, uh, mid tiered scanner with the accuracy and speed. Um, it's got the HDR imagery as well as the VIZ technology. So the VIZ is, uh, stands for visual inertia system, which uh, automatically records your movements um, from setup to setup. Uh, this allows you to uh, essentially pre-register your scans in the field uh, without manual intervention. Um, with all other scanners, you typically have to, just like on my last slide, you have to grab scan with scan, put it together um, and create the best fit. With the RTC 360, it's got five cameras and essentially lets you, or um, pre-registers your, your uh, two scans together. Um, so when you get into the software, you just click uh, optimize and boom, it's already done for you. This cuts a lot of time of working in the office. So if we look at some uh, specifications, um, so I have my four scanners here. So if we look at the maximum range, um, so the scan station P30, 40, and 50, like I said, they're three different scan, uh, scan station models. Um, and they're essentially just defined uh, by uh, the distance they can scan. So the P30 can do 120 meters, the P40, 270 meters, and our P50, which is our flagship station, or flagship scan station can scan at well over a thousand meters, which is a kilometer. This would be great for something like downtown Toronto if you're using for high pit walls. Uh, uh, one great example that I, that I was able to see uh, was uh, they did one setup at the bottom of the Hoover Dam in Nevada, um, and they had the entire uh, face of the Hoover Dam in one scan. Um, this allows to review for any uh, deficiencies, um, any uh, bogging or anything like that that the, that the dam would produce. The RTC 360 does 130 meters, the BLK 60, and the BLK to go does 25 meters, uh, 25 meter radius. Uh, maximum scan rate, uh, the P, sorry, the P series, um, we're looking at a, a million points per second. Um, the RTC, our mid tier, which is also our newest, or one of our newest scanners, does 2 million points per second, a very dense point cloud. Um, our BLK does 360,000 points per second and the BLK to go 420,000. Um, the 3D positional accuracy, so this is where the P-series really shines. So at 10 meter distance uh, radius from the P-series, you're really looking at a 0 0.6, so a half, um, half a millimeter accuracy um, of your data set. And then we, you jump up, obviously, in accuracy the, uh, from the different solutions. You got 1.9 for the RTC. Four meter, or sorry, four millimeters with the BLK, and an average of about two centimeters with the BLK to go. Again, BLK to go is just lower accuracy, but you get your your highest speeds. Um, selectable selectable sensitivity levels. So with the scan station, you can really tone that down. As there's an onboard computer, you can really tone it down 
um, and pick your different settings. So yes, you can select the sensitivity. With all other scanners, you really can't. Um, but with the RTC and the BLK, um, you can really select the low, medium, high. So it's not really sensitivity that, that you're changing. It's more on the uh, density of your point cloud. So it's going to be the rotation that the scanner turns. Um, if you pick low, it's, gonna, it's going to rotate slower. So it picks up more points. Um, if you pick, uh, sorry, I got that reversed. If you pick a high, it will rotate slower. If you pick up, or if you pick low, it'll actually rotate faster. So it'll be picking up less points, but it'll be a much, much quicker scan. With the RTC, we can do a full 360 dome scan um, in about 26 seconds. Um, <clears throat> and with the blk to go it's just a simple point cloud. Um, so no, there's no uh, sensitivity. Um, camera resolution. So all of our scanners, we have a built-in camera. So scan stations, you're looking at 700 megapixel uh, for full dome, 432 for the RTC, 150 for the BLK, and a small 4.8 for the BLK to go. Um, one question that I surprisingly get quite a bit is what kind of laser do these instruments use? So they're all laser class one, meaning they're safe to the human eye, uh, and you don't need laser glasses. Uh, to uh, if it were to pass uh, by you. Um, tilt sensors, so again, our flagship, which is a scan station, has a dual axis compensator, which makes it outshine from all our competitors. So what a dual axis compensator is, is uh, really a sensor in a liquid field dome, um, which adjusts your data real time. So if you're scanning somewhere where there's vibration, like a construction site, or if you are, um, if you're scanning somewhere where there's high winds, uh, you, this, the, if your scanner moves, your scanner will really pick that, that movement up um, and then kind of adjust your data real time. Compared to the RTC, the BLK, uh, and the blk to go uh, as well as uh, our competitors, um, it does a one-time um, uh, movement check. So really at the beginning of its scan, it'll see at, at what angle it's sitting at and then scan from there. Um, so if your scanner were to move uh, mid-scan, um, the RTC and BLK will essentially stop and tell you something happened and to restart your scan. Um, but uh, like some of, our, some of our competitors, um, it will not stop scanning, continue scanning. And then when you bring in the data into your into your computer, you'll have, an, you'll have a big offset because your scanner basically needs positions. All right, so if we look, um, I made up this chart uh, in nice and easy. So if we look at a three-story building um, um, example, so if we take into consideration for the setup time, um, the leveling of the instrument, which is only the P-series for the, for the leveling, if we use a start and run uh, movement and transportation of the, uh, uh, movement and transportation of the instrument to the next setup and export. So if you use all those in um, <clears throat> for this example, so the BLK to go would essentially be your quickest because you can uh, you can quickly walk, go into every single room um, and never stop with the BLK to go. Um, the BLK 360, RTC 360 and the scan stations, they are tripod based uh, scanners. So they sit there to scan. Um, but Again, your scan station, you'll have your highest accuracy, obviously your lowest speeds, because it's a bit bigger of a scanner. Um, it's, it's recommended to level it. Um, and then it's a little heavier of a scanner because of the high accuracy, the high, uh, the high power output, or sorry, the high computing output. Um, so it's, uh, it's your, your slowest, but your highest accurate. And then you got your two mid ranges, um, and they are really dependent on price and how good of data set you want. Um, you got your mid ranges of your, uh, your BLK360 and your RTC360. Uh, <clears throat> Perfect. So once you've created a scan, um, you know, you scan an entire warehouse, you'll scan um, a building, whatever you want to scan. Um, so you're basically in this stage right here. So with the P series, um, we're able to. Uh, <clears throat> We're able to, uh, to, uh, to offer you a controller for it, which you can use the CS10, 15, CS20, or CS35 um, controller, which are, are basic Leica controllers. 
or you can use uh, any other remote desktop uh, capable device. So that includes an iPad, iPhone, smartphones, computers, or an external simulator to run it. So you can do it really remotely. Uh, you can sit in your office while this, uh, the scanner is in a completely different location. Um, for the RTC, BLK, and blk to go uh, you'd essentially be using Cyclone Field 360, which is in, uh, uses an in-field uh, uh, iPad or Android app for, qu uh, for quick access to projects and data. Um, and it also gives you the option for in-field pre-registration. So it really saves you the time in the office to register all your, your scans together. You can do that right on the iPad um, while your scan is performing. Um, from there, you bring it into one of our uh, two softwares. So we got Cyclone Register 360 or Register Core. Um, so these two softwares are essentially the same. Um, Register Core is a much more advanced software. So if you have to do a lot of uh, data manipulation, auto alignment of scans, um, that's really the software you'd want to use. Um, when it comes to Cyclone Register 360, uh, it's really a basic and user-friendly software for very simple registration and export. Um, you got your visual alignment tools uh, for, again, user-friendly and efficient cloud-to-cloud uh, -cloud registration um, of your different scans and all types of sizes and that, or types and sizes. Um, it's really a cloud-to-cloud -cloud and target-based workflow, uh, and it includes a full automatic target uh, finding and fitting uh, and supports for uh, imported server-controlled data. Um, so this really would be your method to grab all your scans, doesn't matter if you do only two, um, if you do only one, or if you do 10,000 different scans, which would take a while, um, you'd bring it into these two softwares to really uh, to put them all together. From here, you got three different options. So you can stay with Cyclone, the Cyclone software, and we offer you different um, modules really to, uh, to work with. So the different modules, you'd be looking at Cyclone model, which is kind of self-explanatory. You can do your simple modeling, um, your best fit modeling. You got your standard uh, steelbook catalog um, for your modeling. So if you got a W channel, a C channel, angle irons, um, you just have to click on the point cloud and say, I want to model this. And it will actually sample the point cloud size uh, that you clicked and will uh, put a best fit uh, W channel and give you a recommendation. This looks like a W40 by 30. Um, would you like to accept? And you click yes, and it'll actually put uh, a nice model there for you again automatically. When you're modeling, it's got a cloud detection uh, uh, P, uh, component in it. So if you're do modeling some piping, and your two pieces of pipe, they clash and you don't see it, you can run this clash detection and it'll actually uh, highlight it for you and say, something's happening here, please take a look. Um, it's got auto pipe finder, it's got auto pipe uh, runs, um, basically to auto automatically find and fit cylinders. Um, from there, you can use Cyclone Survey, which is really, uh, again, self-explanatory. So instead of being out in the field with the GPS or total station, you can essentially just scan the road that you're looking at or the road, the field, whatever you'd like to, to scan and do your survey work in the office. So you can do your brake line uh, generation uh, uh, from coded templates. Uh, there's smart picks uh, and points for grid tools. There's a virtual surveyor um, and a data collector emulator. Um, so you can, again, do your survey work there. Um, you can extract contours, cross-section profiles. You can mesh. Um, there's, uh, you can calculate volume areas and different clearances. Um, from there, you can go Cyclone 3DR. So Cyclone 3DR is a, is a, one of my favorite softwares actually for, uh, for modeling. So, uh, if you're going to do fast, light and flexible, uh, meshing tools, that's one of the main softwares to use. Um, it's got a domain specific workflow, uh, sub module basically. So you can do uh, the one module is called AEC, which is architectural engineering and construction. Um, you can do survey modules or you can do simple tank inspection uh, modules, which uh, gives you a great uh, cylinder um, unrolling feature for, um, let's say uh, like an oil tank, you'd be able to unroll it and see where your bends are and stuff. It's got automatic feature extractions. <clears throat> uh, contour extractions, and there's a lot more you can do. 
and then you got your Cyclone Model VR. Same thing as Cyclone Model, but it really adds that plugin uh, to slap on some uh, VR goggles and pretty much walk around in your point cloud. It's that simple. Um, your second, your second way, your sorry, your second uh, output or your workflow is basically exporting it to your favorite software. So we're able to offer you uh, many different plugins for again your favorite modeling uh, software. So that includes AutoCAD, which is all, which is also Civil 3D, um, MicroStation, Revit, Navisworks, um, PDMS, BricsCAD, and SolidWorks. Um, so again, your favorite uh, modeling software, um, we have that plugin for you to run uh, point clouds uh, in, the end, uh, <coughs> in the software. Um, from there, you can go right to the deliverable proof client. Or if you're done uh, fully registering your data and you're happy and you want to show that to your client, you can just simply publish it. Just say, hey, I'm done. I want my client to see it. Um, you can publish it through TrueView, which TrueView is... Uh, the software where you just sit in the position of the scanner and you you just look around there's no movement of the point cloud um it's just you sit at the station and you can see the pictures if you want to look at the uh point cloud if you want to zoom in zoom out you want to do measurements jetstream will be the option for you um i'll sh actually show you guys an example in jetstream um, next slide so from there, or you can export LGS and basically plug that into any of your CloudWorks, um, CloudWorks modules, but they all go to a deliverable to your clients. All right, so if we jump to a live demonstration. <clears throat> Perfect. All right, so I'm going to start with a Cyclone. So this data set, um, this is actually the St. Mary's Cathedral out in uh, Kingston, Ontario. Um, so I personally did the scan. I, if I put this on, you can see all my different setups. So this is actually where I sat, um, all these little red dots. This is where I sat, produced a scan, and, uh, and carried on. So this whole data set took me about three hours, and that's from the beginning, the very first scan, to uh, importing to uh, putting everything together. So I use the RTC 360 for this. Um, and most of my scans actually self registered right in the field. I probably had I probably had about two or three um, that didn't self register because again, nothing's perfect. Um, so I just had to do that that took me a, a mere 30 seconds. Um, so I was able to produce uh, this point cloud. Um, so now with this point cloud, I have uh, millimeter, I have millimeter accurate uh, um, <coughs> a data set of this cathedral. I even picked up the inside. So if we zoom in, really. It's a little choppy. I'm running uh, the webinar as well. So the laptop is, uh, the fans are going off. Um, so this is what the inside of the, the cathedral looks like. Sorry guys, give me a second, I'll zoom in here to the altar. So we can take a look this way. Just let the data load up. So this is what a point cloud would, would look like. So. I have essentially a 3D, um, not a model, but kind of like a 3D design of, of the cathedral um, inside and out. Um, from this, you can simply export, you can start modeling, you can do a bunch of different stuff. Um, you can quickly view a slice if you'd like. So from this, uh, if I look top view, this is in the way. If I look top view, I have nice, a nice cross section of where all the pillars are. Um, I have uh, the outer bounds of the, uh, of the cathedral. I can see how thick the walls, the walls are of the cathedral. Um, yeah, uh, you can move up and down, nice and simple. So from here, I can see where all the seats are, where the altar was, or sorry, where the, where the altar is. Um, I have really good data of uh of this uh of this cathedral and like i said it took me three hours and this is i have the whole footprint 
of the uh, of the cathedral. Um, if you were to deliver this type of uh, data set to your client um, and you want them to view it, you would simply just publish it to an LGS file and this is what they would see. So this is Jetstream Viewer. So Jetstream Viewer is a fully free software um, as long as they're provided with a uh, with a, the right file type, which would be LGS. Um, they would simply just bring that into the software. They can download the software right from the like the Geosystems website. Um, you provide them with an LGS file, then now they can look at it. So this is an offline scan station. So this is where um, this is where your clients would see the deliverable. So if they had any questions uh, about measurements, this is where they can really produce all that. They cannot do any uh, data manipulation. So basically deleting points, things like that. It's just a way to view, uh, to view all your scans. Um, you can turn on your scan station. So basically these little uh, yellow triangles is where I was sitting. Um, and if you actually double click on them, it'll turn on your HDR photography and uh, kind of give you a great glimpse of, uh, <coughs> of uh, your scans. So you can move you know, station to station. This is the altar. If you look this way, if you're looking right down the uh, right down the <coughs> right down the cathedral, or you can go back to you know point cloud and just move around. So this is I just want to show you guys what really a point cloud or point cloud software would look like, how it would basically rotate. Um, yeah, just to give you yeah, give you guys a quick demonstration on that. So if we go back to the there you go. Perfect. All right. So this is where um, I really talk briefly on the uh, mobile platform, uh, mobile sensor platforms. Um, so what you're seeing here is uh, this is called the Pegasus 2, and it also has a bigger brother called uh, the Pegasus 2 Ultimate. So these two, uh, these two options are vehicle mounted. Um, they have a built-in GPS. They have a scanner. Um, and they're really used to drive down the road and just pick up scans, kind of like Google Maps, um, where you know the car is just driving down the road with some cameras. This actually will produce a scan for you. So you'd essentially end up with what you see in this background picture. You'd end up with something like that. Uh, it's really used for some great city layouts, some geography, um, historical documentation, uh, what may you be. So we have different uh, mobile mapping platforms. So we have the uh, we have the Pegasus backpack, which uh, is person mounted. You just put it on your back. Um, this is great for walking down uh, aisles or in interior of a building. Um, it does have a GPS, so when you're in when you're inside of a building, the GPS just will stop working. That's all. Um, it'll take pictures. It's got lidar technology. Um, from there, you can upgrade, you can use a ProScan, which is essentially kind of the same thing, um, but just on a cart. Um, and so you can use it with a GPS compatibility or total station. So there's a little arm up here that you can see that will uh, turn into, um, there you go, that will turn into either a GPS or a prism for your, for your total station to, to follow. And it's a manual push cart. Um, this one, this big, uh, this big unit here. So this is called the Pegasus Stream. So it's hitch mounted. Um, it's got GPR technology, which stands for ground penetrating radar, um, as well as a scanner. So it's pretty much an all-in-one bundle to, to really get, um, if you want to map your city, this is pretty much what you'd want to use. So you'd be able to detect what's underneath the pavement, what's around the pavement, and basically what's on top of the pavement. Um, it's got GPS, picture, and LiDAR technology all built in. Um, and then you, for specialized projects, uh, for rail, uh, for uh, rail applications, you got the like uh, the, the Sidetrack one. Um, so it's a rail mounted system. Uh, again, GPS compatibility, and it's a manual push cart down the rail. So if we speak about the four laser scanners, um, the RTC 360, the VLK 360, the P30, 40, and 50, and as well as the VLK to go, um, basically who would benefit 
um, from a laser scanner. So the four main uh, industries that would really benefit from it, engineering, surveying, uh, mining, and construction. Um, uh, you obviously have your architectural, which I didn't put in there. Um, but if it, someone who would really benefit from laser scanning is someone who's looking for um, quick, uh, accurate, uh, sorry, accurate and reliable uh, digital copy of a project. So if you're on site and you want uh, basically to just um, have this entire site in your PC, the scanner is the way to go. It would give you that option to really uh, to really work with there. Um, it really reduces your survey turnaround time from weeks to hours. Um, and if I could really touch base on that huge time difference is if you took an example of someone in the field with a total station or GPS, um, they're essentially picking up uh, one point per, let's say every five seconds, three seconds if they're really, uh, if they're really rushing it. Um, I'm able to pick up about two million uh, points per second. So like I said, I can pick up this, the whole site in uh, just, let's say, a matter of an hour um, and have it ready to go in my PC. Um, <clears throat> you can work and capture from a safe distance, not disturbing workers or traffic. So a great example for that would be this one right here. Um, we're essentially looking at a scope um, so that we, we basically put a BLK360 in there, which uh, anybody who knows mining, you're not allowed to go into a scope. Um, so the BLK360 will pick up your entire scope um, at a very high density uh, compared to CMS scanners um, uh, in under three minutes, uh, nice and quick. Um, this is the tank. Uh, this, if you guys can look right here, this is the tank uh, example I was showing you guys or uh, mentioning earlier. Um, it'll basically give you a heat map of where your bends, where your kinks are, if there's any uh, bubbling going on, um, your scanner will pick that up. Um, which is virtually uh, naked to the, or sorry, it's virtually unseeable to the naked eye. Um, you'd have to have uh, a technology advanced um, unit uh, to see that, which the P-Series is. And then down here, we have a nice modeled uh, um, plant. So because Cyclone model offers the uh, auto modeling tool, um, <clears throat> at the very beginning of your, of your uh, project, Cyclone will actually ask you, is there any, should I find any pipes? Um, if you click yes, it'll actually go through your whole data set, see if there's any cylinders and start modeling for you. Um, your, your input at the end is just to delete what, uh, what you don't want modeled or just adjust from there. And I believe, I believe that is it. Um, so just one quick uh, thing I'd like to mention. Um, our upcoming webinars, I believe May 30th and on, Zoom is now coming out with an update that all meetings will require a, a password. Um, we will provide you that when you sign up, we will provide you that uh, and it'll be received by, uh, by your email. Um, and these on the right hand side are our upcoming webinars if you wanna take note on that. So the uh, table is now open for question. Uh, whoever would like to, uh, to ask questions, go ahead. Um, so question from Steve Gravel, um, have any of your scanners been vehicle mounted? Um, I may have covered this, is the movement too rough for the scanning resolution? Great question there, Steve. So yes, we do have uh, great solutions for vehicle mounted scanners, which is the Pegasus 2 and the Pegasus uh, to ultimate. Um, so because a P series has a built in dual access compensator, which uh, when I was explaining, um, it's basically a sensor in a liquid field bubble. So if you were to put, uh, I'm going to say a bean into a glass of water, if you start shaking that glass of water, that bean will essentially stay in the same spot, which kind of acts like the, um, the, uh, uh, dual access compensator in a P series. So if you're driving down the road and there's a bump, or anything like that, the sensor will pick that up and your data just won't move. It'll just be essentially, um, it'll be streamlined. Obviously there's a limit. So if you're driving down a dirt road where there's huge humps and bumps and stuff like that, um, you will not, um, the scanner will probably pick that up. But if you're just running downtown Toronto, downtown Sudbury, um, well, 
I mean, subway roads are a different thing. Um, you will be able to, uh, the scanner will be able to adjust its data appropriately uh, based on the bumps. Great question though, Steve, thanks. Uh, Bruno piped in, said, uh, Steve, we can also mount the scanners to our robots. Yep, we can definitely do that. We have great solutions for um, underground, uh, underground scope scanning as well as surface scanning. Uh, we have partnerships that we can uh, offer some robots, um, quick robots, slow robots, um, even uh, drones. We have uh, 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 LiDAR, uh, LiDAR enabled drones that you can you know, essentially throw into a scope, um, or if it's somewhere where you just wanna quickly scan with a drone, we also have that option. Perfect, okay, well, um, nothing really is popping up right now. Um, from my presentation, here, I'll bring that up for you. There you go. So all my contact information is there. Uh, feel free to copy it down. If you have any questions you'd like to ask personally, or, uh, you just can't think of it now, um, feel free. My cell phone number is there. Text me, call me. Um, or my emails there that you can definitely drop me a line. Um, I'll get back to everybody who sends me an email. So again, Stefan Roy, uh, thanks for attending my presentation and uh, uh, hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks.